Hi guys, I'm Nathan from Crazy Amazing Designs, and in this video, I wanna take a look at ProPresenter's configuration, the main user interface of ProPresenter. So that way, if you're a, an operator of ProPresenter, or if you're setting up ProPresenter, the slides and lyrics and different things, then you will have some confidence in understanding how the software works. So the first thing I wanna look at is our library. Every church has one library. Every instance of ProPresenter has one library. Now, you're gonna use that library to put all your songs in it. So when you build a new song, you're gonna put it in the library. Now, playlist items are very cool because playlists are how you stay organized from week to week, every single time you use ProPresenter. So I'm gonna create a playlist every Sunday, every Wednesday, Bible study, you know, every time that you're using ProPresenter, you're gonna create a playlist. And inside that playlist, I'm gonna have all of my service items from start to finish. So that way the volunteer or the operator can just click through those different items. Libraries in ProPresenter 7 are actually a little bit different because now you can have more than one library. So here's an example. If your youth use the media computer and the adults on Sunday use the media computer, you might have two different versions of the same song. And instead of saying, in the database, the name of the song dash adults, and then the name of the song dash youth, you could create a database for the adults and a database for the youth. And then each of them would just click on their own library in order to access their songs. And you can act, bring uh, songs in from both libraries into a playlist. So the next thing to look at is the media. Now in the bottom left here, you can see I've got some playlists set up. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one because it is a really cool thing. It's called a smart playlist. So I've got some regular playlists. I've got my worship media playlist and then a sermons media playlist. So any sermon content will go in there. And as you can see in my worship media playlist, I've got like these cool backgrounds and I can apply these to songs and then they play. Or I could click on one and it'll send it to the background. So that's kind of cool. So I mentioned this really cool playlist. So if I add a smart playlist and then I go to my documents folder and I click on CMG, I'm gonna hit okay and it'll open this folder. This is a smart folder. So if I go back to my computer a day or a week later and I add something to that folder, it's gonna bring it into ProPresenter. So that's really cool. So CMG is where I got this content from, churchmotiongraphics.com. And if you haven't checked them out, they are a great website that creates monthly motion packs for churches and people to use for uh, worship presentation stuff. There's lots of stuff on their website. You can get free stills from them that look like all of these awesome packs. If you uh, purchase their subscription plan, then you can uh, get all of these motion backgrounds. So check out the link in the description to see what that's all about. The next thing I wanna look at is this output monitor on the top right. And this is really cool because on the right side of here, we can clear all and that gets rid of everything or we can clear the lyrics or we can clear the background. It's so awesome because on the new ProPresenter 7 interface, we now have access to clear all of these items and we can see when they're available, when they're playing. So if there's not something on the screen, then it's not gonna be read, obviously. So right underneath uh, uh, this output monitor, is something very important because you might actually be wondering at this point, hey, I don't see, like when I click on the on something here, it doesn't show up in the top right. So that's probably because this setting right here needs changed. So we've got two options, audience and screen. So I can go ahead and click on stage screen and I can monitor my stage display monitors that are being sent out. So I've only got two set up, but you might have multiples of these set up. Okay, so right underneath of that output monitor, we've got these three options. We've got uh, the current video playing, so you can see there's a video playing, and if I pause it, it pauses, right? I can I can jump through the video. And the second one, this is for announcement layers. So if you're playing video over your announcement layer, then you can uh, play and pause it there. And then the last thing is media, music. And underneath of this uh, bin and the play pause, I've got a playlist for music. So I've got two, one default, and then one from uh, a website that I get content from. And if I click on something in there, it will start playing. Okay, I wanna pause it, right? I don't wanna just delete it or shut the, media, the layer off. I wanna pause it so I can just click pause right here. So if you're ever in this one, don't try to pause your uh, graphic video. You gotta get over to uh, the music and then hit pause there. So that's really cool. And any of these things you can add to slides. So if I just go ahead and drag it to this slide, when I click on the slide, it'll start playing. And then I can clear it and then I can click on the slide again, and it'll start playing. So that's really cool to be able to 
you know, automate all of these things so that a volunteer just clicks on the slide they're supposed to click on and it automatically starts playing the music and they don't even need to realize what they're doing. So I wanna take a look at templates and templates are a great way to have consistency across all of your slides. So I'm going to go to themes and check out some of the pre-built templates. So we'll just do uh, black bars or lines and we'll just click on this uh, white horizontal one. So cool, so now it formatted all of these lyrics with the look of this template and uh, I like it. So if you would like to learn a little bit more about templates, then check out the video I made specifically on looking at templates. That is the gist of the interface inside of ProPresenter 7. The last thing I wanna do is I wanna take a look at creating a song. Creating songs is super easy inside of ProPresenter, so I wanna take you through the process just real quick. I am here inside of Safari, and I have gone to Google and typed in Good God Almighty by Crowder, and it's gonna bring up the lyrics. So I like to use websites like azlyrics.com, uh, genie.com is I think the other site that it works really well. Uh, I find that copying lyrics off of Google sometimes can give me uh, uh, issues. So I like to use AZ lyrics whenever possible. So I'm gonna go through here and I'm just gonna highlight all of this text and I'm gonna hit Command C or just right click and hit copy. Uh, before we leave this page, I wanna take a look at a couple of things. So you can see we've got two lines, three lines, three lines. So basically two lines in a paragraph, three lines in this paragraph, three lines in this paragraph. So that's important when we go back to ProPresenter. So now I'm gonna go to File, Import, Text from Clipboard, and it's gonna bring up this little window. So we've got a couple options, slides delimited by line break or paragraph break. So we saw the paragraph, it was three, two lines, then three lines, and three lines. If I do paragraph, it'll put that on a slide like that, uh, two, three, and three. But if I do line break, I can tell it how many lines do I wanna put on each slide. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I've got my size, so we can just select our screen. And we've got themes. Now, themes are really neat because we can literally go through, and I've got this template set up right here, so it's gonna make it look exactly like that. And then we can select where we're putting it in the library and our playlist, and we're just gonna go ahead and import. Cool, it looks exactly like it was supposed to. If I hit edit slide, we can see that the slides came across just fine. Nice, so I wanna show you real quick how to make these black bars. So I'm gonna go shut these off. So the first thing we need to do is select the, uh, the text bar. We can uh, click on it down here, and then just go to shape and fill. Now we're gonna get the, this nice black bar by uh, adding fill, but we don't wanna just fill it, we want to uh, do something else too. So if I click lines only, then I can select some, from three options. I can do full width, which is gonna be the entire width of the screen. I can do line width, and then I can do max line width. So when I, when I, once I click on one of these options, then we can adjust the padding. Now, if I do any negative number, if I do like 50, let's even do one, right? It brings it down, but it doesn't uh, put a line between the text. So if I do any negative number, then it does stuff cool like this. You can play around with this, but that's the gist of how to uh, set up lyrics with a with that black bar on the bottom. If you're interested in checking out how to set up lyrics, then go check out the video I created on that that goes into it with a lot more detail. And that's pretty much it. It's really not that difficult when you take a look at the interface of ProPresenter. So if you have any questions or comments about this video, leave them in the comments below this video. I will definitely get back to you like uh, Crazy Amazing Designs on Instagram and we post daily content there. And also uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crazy Amazing Designs. I would love to have you follow along and be a part of growing as we learn to do production well. So we'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching.